This is a chatbot that is embedded on the website. It is at the bottom right corner in this case, and I can also drag and drop it as a user on the page, whatever I like, only horizontally. And then when I open it, here is the initial message that I see here, and then I can ask any question, just like I would chat with uh, ChatGPT or any other large language model. And this is a conversational bot that gets data from my website, retrieving data from a vector database and providing answers and links to the sources of those answers from my website as well as my YouTube content. That chatbot is built in Flowwise and there are a few steps before we can actually achieve that final chatbot that is embeddable on any website. And in this video, we are looking exactly at how we can build a vector database that the chatbot can retrieve data from when asked a question. So this means that we use our data stored in a vector database to allow the chatbot to retrieve answers to questions from users. In a past video, we saw how we can, for example, send videos from YouTube through the YouTube API to a Google Sheet. Now, in this next phase, with the aim of developing the final AI chatbot, we are sending that data to a vector database. A vector database is characterized by a vector column. That is a column that uses an array of a specific size that is called an embedding. And this embedding represents a position of the text that the OpenAI API, for example, transforms into this array that is understandable by AI. So to do this, we will use Superbase and Make. In Superbase, we can create a new project, which I already have done it. It can be on the free plan. This project that I'm using is on the free plan currently. And once the product is created, we will go to the SQL editor and we will create a table. I will include the full SQL function in the description of this video. We'll create this table with the specific embedding column that is the key one of vector type size 1536 that is the OpenAI model so that we can store data there and allow the AI chatbot to query that data upon receiving a question. You can see here we create a function match documents and that's the function that the AI chatbot will use in Flowwise which we'll see in an upcoming video to query the documents from the table and the table in my case includes the ID that is a unique ID, the title of the content, the content that is the actual text that we use to create the embedding, some metadata that is in particular the row number in the Google Sheet and the ID of that content. And there is the summary, the URL, publish date, categories, page and created time. To populate this table, we use a make scenario. Once the table is created in Superbase, this is the make scenario that we can use to send data from the Google Sheet to the Superbase table that in my case is called documents. The trigger here is the watch new rows module in Google Sheets. So once I set up my connection on this module, I will get my sheet that is single content where I store all my content. I want to get all the content limit to five, that is how many items or rows I want to process for each execution. And I set this scenario to run once per week so that once per week, it gets the new content, creates embedding from that content, and then inserts the content into the Superbase table. The first time that I ran this automation, I sent all the content in bulk by selecting choose where to start all. And I also increased the limit to make sure that more than five items or rows were processed at any given time. The second step in the make scenario is the OpenAI make an API call module. And that's because here we are using the embeddings API. You can find more information on the OpenAI API documentation. You can see here we're using the slash v1 slash embeddings URL endpoint with a post request where the body has an input key that includes the content from the sheet. That is the content from the essays or YouTube videos that I store in the sheet. Then there is the model. And here I'm using the text embedding three small and the encoding format that is float. You can see here when mapping the content in the input, I'm also replacing new lines with space and quotation marks with the SK quotation mark character because this needs to be a valid JSON format for the request to work properly. So that's why I'm replacing these characters if they are present in the content. Once the embedding is created, I then use the PostgreSQL module to insert a row into a table. And that's because Superbase is based on Postgre. So that's why here I'm selecting a table that is called documents in my case, mapping the ID, the content, the metadata here, which is in JSON format, the embedding, which I joined, mapping the embedding from the previous module that is within data embedding. And I selected this array, as you can see here, and I join it with a comma and enclose it in square brackets 
because that's the correct format that will be accepted by the Superbase table of vector type. And there's a title mapped from the sheet, summary, URL, publish date, and create it time. So now I'm going to run this module because there has been a new content published. You can see here that the embedding was created and the content was inserted into the table. So when I go to my Superbase table here, I will see documents table with 290 records and I can see each record has the ID, the content, that is the full text if it is an essay, the metadata, the embedding, that is a very long vector, title, summary, URL, and all the other content that I just showed you in May was mapped in here. And once all of that is done and working, there is the function in Superbase. And in here, I created a flow-wise chat flow that gets the embedding from OpenAI. It uses the match documents query from Superbase within the documents table and then sends the records that are found within that table to the conversational retrieval QA chain where the chat model is chat OpenAI. Although we can also use other models, but for this example, I'm using OpenAI for embeddings as well as for the chat model. We can set the temperature, the model, as well as additional parameters here. And on the conversational retrieval QA chain, we can also set the instructions for the AI bot on how to answer and what's the character of that bot properly. So that is a bit of prompt engineering. However, I will record a new video regarding this entire workflow, as well as how to deploy a flow-wise chatbot on the web and ensure that it is always up and running and how you can embed it on any website or web service. That is it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching for now and see you in the next one.